Welcome to the Dropping a Coil show with me, Flash, the talker guy, and Larry Woods and Rob Works waiting in the wings. So we're going to give you a show. We we, uh, we missed last week. Something came up for Larry. He got a little tied up. I'm sure he'll explain all the details today. And uh, I'd like to thank Grimner, like I usually do, for giving me this playground to enjoy myself in. And for your chatting experience, we got Bots and Bodies, Barman, Grimner, Moose Girl, Kate, Anti, Charles Sedoni, Chloe, Dan Van Meter, me, Flash Somebody, J Dread, J's Nines, J's Meister Brow, Prince, Rob Works, Trust No One, F Van Meter, Vanna White, W4DKV, Weather Dork, The Phantom, Asmo2, A Asmo, uh, CC66, Chloe, Creepy Joe, that's my alter ego. Cyborg Noodle, Ensive, Frumpy, Kiss, Matt, WJ2002, Pone Sauce, The Holiest Roger, and Z-Fix. And uh, like I said last week, Larry got tied up, so I'm sure he's waiting around here to tell us all what happened. Yeah, yeah tell us take all it away, it. Larry. Hi, guys. Hey, hey, there he is. I thought we bored you. <laughs> yeah, I finally got somebody in to cut some rope. I ain't tied up no more. Well, welcome back and tell us the updates. We crave updates, Larry. Lots of them. Well, this week I have some distressing news. Because for the past two weeks, we've been trying to make a motor run. Not just any motor, a three-phase motor. Now, I can light up a light bulb with this thing, and that's just sweet. But so far, there's something wrong with the diagrams because we're not getting the on-on-off for a three-phase motor. All we're getting is one-on and two-off, or two-on and one-off. And that will not make the rotor rotate. So, mm. we've, been, we've been discussing it every day coming up with new drawings and new new methods. Uh, the, the guy I talk with for four or five hours every single day has got a complete setup, and we're, we're playing with the, the equipment that he's got and going over it and over it and over it and checking connections and continuity and all the funny things that you have to test and still no rotation. Hmm. We can get full locked rotor in all three positions, which means that everything is on at the same time. We can get absolutely nothing at all three positions, which means it's turned off all the way. And we can get a jog, but we can't get rotation yet. Hmm. And that's that's all been through one switching coil. So finally today, after after realizing that we've done all the testing that we can do with a single coil, we got to thinking about it, and it was like, well, all we need is more spaces so that we can get an individual transformer for each circuit. For each for each L1, L2, and L3, the motor load. Yeah. So, that's what we did today. We have worked out the circuit again and again and again and again. Uh, it looks promising. We're electrically charging one half of... Uh, one coil, no, we're electrically charging one half of one transformer in one coil that has two power takeoffs on it, which is L1 and L3. We are inducing the other half of that magnetically, the other half of that transformer magnetically through another different coil. 
Okay. The second coil is got two transformers in it and four capacitors and L2 comes off the middle of that second trans uh, that second coil. Uh, for L1, we have a capacitor to give that, that leg an extra kick. For L2, we have a capacitor to give that leg an extra kick. And for L3, we have a capacitor. So, possibly, uh, this might work. We've got on the secondary coil, we've got, uh, four capacitors built into it to slow it down so that uh, we'll have a definite lag between L1 and L3 for L2 to work in. Uh, we've got two power takeoffs on the first coil with L1 and L3 in it. Uh, and it also has four capacitors in it so that we maintain the resonance between both coils. They're the same resonance so that it's working harmonically. Uh, we've got a power takeoff on the L1, L3 coil. And that's about it. That's about where we're standing right now. When I get this drawing inked, then I'll I'll take a picture of it and send it to my counterpart, and he will hook his coil up the way this diagram shows, and we'll see if we can blow something up. I want to see smoke. I want to see something happen, even if it's bad. Right. right. No, nothing happened. What, yeah, I get that part. Yeah. What kind of motor? Is it? Go ahead. What kind of motor is it? It's a three-phase brushless DC motor. So that's why you run into a transformer. Um, yeah. What's what? What capacity is it? What what size motor is it? It's uh, it has run on four volts. But it is a 36 volt maximum motor. Uh -huh. The different voltage just creates a different rotation. Uh huh. Uh, and it's uh, see, uh, uh, I I don't know. I don't remember the other stats on the motor. Okay. Well, this is very interesting because I've been looking at uh, motors for marine applications and uh, for driving boats. Yeah, uh, big, uh, large uh, capacity type motors. Uh, like I'm looking at one here is the uh, 60, 60 kilowatt. Maximum input 60 kilowatts, 96 volts, 60 kilowatt uh, motor that will do. Um, let's see, where is it? Oh, well, the output power is 60 kilowatts. And now that's the input power. Where is it? Okay, it must have been another one I was looking at. Told me all that. Okay. Typical battery size to run this motor is a 400 amp hour at 96 volts. So. Wow. Okay. I'm just curious what it's going to take to run one of these motors. A lot of coils. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it'll, it'll. We can boost up the voltage through one coil. We can boost up the amperage through a different coil. Yeah. So, yeah, whatever whatever is required, we can provide. It's just going to take more coils to do it. Yeah. Um. I mean, then we're getting into size restrictions. No. Uh, we're doing it with 12 circuit coils that are uh, uh, 
Our biggest one so far, the capacitance coil is uh, 28 inches about on the outside edge. Yeah. So, so it's still going to be a hell of a lot smaller than that massive battery bank that they're going to have to have to operate that system. Right. Here's another one. 48 to 75 horsepower, 16 kilowatt to 26 kilowatt output. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll power a 40 to 80 foot boat. 48 volt in and 72 volts input. If you got enough money to buy a boat that big, would you want to adopt a son? Uh, no, I, I'm not talking about buying a boat. I'm talking about selling these systems to these rich fuckers that own these boats. Oh, okay. Hell yeah. And then after a few years, maybe I'll be able to afford one my damn self. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> so they've got they've got all kinds so okay so the 60 to 75 horsepower let me just post this for you to see oh crap that's not what I wanted it's not a good sign uh, I just clicked the wrong button I do that all the time no doubt I think I have a, uh, an award coming for being the most incompetent Computer guy. <laughs> There's lots of competition, but I'm really bad at it. There, there I just posted it in the wire so Larry can see it. Oh, you don't um, want it in the notes? I, yeah, you can put it in the notes. I mean, it's not relevant to oh, yeah, the calls. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I just put it in there so he could see it. Cause so he, finish, right? he don't want to chat with us. Oh, no. All this old ghost. He's a duck up old fart. <laughs> No, I was letting Larry and get caught up with what he was no, I'm just okay for. I am just kidding. Anyways, but that, that ties into the whole uh, motor thing you're talking about. Um, this being a small motor, um, uh, if you uh, if, if when you hook that thing up, you say it wouldn't turn the motor, but you get power. You, you say you're you're energizing it, but it won't turn. Um, yeah. Do you try kicking it, spinning it manually to, oh, to oh give it yeah. a start? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So nothing uh, that way? That, that's something else that's really strange. When we spin it man, manually, we have communication between the motor and the coil because that bounces a, a compass needle. So yeah. that's showing us that, that there's communication between the coil and the and the system. And well, the yeah, system. you've got a connection. There's going to be communication or some kind of. Uh, uh, well, yeah, we relation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about that? Does the motor have a uh, a capacitor? A starter, no, starter capacitor. A, no, this is a brushless DC motor. We're putting a capacitor in it through our our circuit, uh -huh. through our, our wiring. Uh, L1 has a capacitor in it. Uh, L2 has a capacitor in it. And L3 has a capacitor in it in the starting cycle. Okay. Not in the run cycle, but in the starting cycle. Well, yeah, yeah, it's only in the run in the start start cycle. Um, yeah. Speed constant. So uh, this thing says that peak current for seventy five horses is going to pull four hundred amps. That's really not a problem. And so, what kind of unit would it take to run this motor? Well, if we can get them, if you can get them working, first of all. Well, if we can get it working, what is that? Uh, Twenty-six kilowatts. Uh, takes, for that motor, it would. Yeah. Twenty-seven. Oh, that's no. the output. That's the power output. Twenty-six kilowatt. Yeah. Okay, so uh, that, 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 that,
Peak peak current's four hundred amp. Peak power is fifty three kilowatts. Peak torque one hundred forty four newtons per meter. Forty eight. It's the volts. Forty eight to seventy two volts. Well, this is a seventy two uh, volt motor uh, at two hundred amps. That's the nominal nominal power usage. Peak is. Uh, 400 amps, double that. So all our balls to the walls pulling 400 amps, okay. 72 Four, volts. 400, 400 amps would be 10, 10 coils, which is still much, much smaller than the battery bank that it's going to use. And uh, about 1,000 pounds lighter. Oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> and... You don't have to replace them every five years. Yeah. And you don't have to have a fuel tank. Right. Which eliminates a whole bunch more weight out of the boat. Now, these, yeah, things, these things don't have to be oriented in any particular fashion, right? In other words, you can stand them up on, on, at an angle on the hull or whatever. whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, you can stack them. Uh, ten coils would probably be ten feet. Okay. So does this open up the design for new kinds of shapes for boating? So, so at twenty-eight feet in, in a in a four foot wide by five foot tall section, you could put ten coils. Four by five, you could fit. Yeah, it's two side by side and stack them five tall. Four by five by ten. No. Four by five by five? Yeah, yeah, four yeah, four by four by five. Okay. Four four foot square on the bottom and five foot tall. Okay. <laughs> Tell me when you're open for questions too, Larry. I'm always open for questions. I never know the answer. Okay. Doug wants to know, does weather interfere with the coils? No, I wouldn't imagine. Um, well, is that just the asking the question? I don't know. Uh, yes and no. As far as whether harming the insulation, possibly. However, it's 200 volt rated insulation, or it's 200, 200 degrees centigrade rated insulation, so heat won't bother it. Uh, we plan on encasing these in acrylic anyway, so there should be no problem with weather at all. Uh, and if you're talking about electrical storms or EMP sunbursts, absolutely zero effect. Other than a possible no beneficial effect as far as giving it more charge. Uh, yeah, yeah, well... On a small thing like this that goes on that ship, it wouldn't it wouldn't give it more charge. It would more than likely burn out one of the coils, the first coil it hit. Is well, that's what you got hit. That's what you got hit by lightning. I'm talking about just ambient no. static electricity in the air. No problem at all, ever. Yeah. No of course, problem. yeah. You can't expect anything to survive a lightning strike. Uh, 100%. Well, anyway. our, entire, our entire city will. That well, will absorb the lightning strike and make it where you can sell that whole lightning strike back to the grid. Yeah. You know, a large, large system like that. Yeah. And you're going to have uh, lightning absorption technology in there built in. So, anyway. Well, that's very Thank interesting. Um and that is uh, that is uh, dis distressing uh, that the motor's not working. Well, I'm stubborn. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, <laughs> it's going to work. Uh, we have we have eliminated a lot of things and we have learned a lot of things about how these coils operate that we did not know before uh -huh. so so that's that's a, a plus uh 
we have found a lot of ways now, 12 to 15 ways that it will not work, but they're all good diagrams. They're all electrically sound diagrams, so they will do something else later on. We just haven't found what we want to interface with yet that fits those particular designs. Like I've been saying, there's 144 different ways to wire these things. Half of them are just a different polarity, so that leaves 72 different wiring diagrams that we've got to come up with. <laughs> uh, and so now we now we're down to, <laughs> to only about 400 left. No, a bunch left, but still we're we're narrowing down the field. Uh, yeah. Today's drawing is going about doing it with two coils. We we've, we've eliminated the possibility of it working with one coil. So that's a plus. That's a good thing. Now that was just a single coil uh, with the hallback array in it, or you were driving it with something else. Yeah, that's that's the driver is a single coil with a hallback array in it, and that's what you were trying to get the motor to run with. No, we that was our power supply, but we haven't had that power supply yet with this system because the guys that have it have the hallback array are not testing. And the guys that are testing don't have the hallback array, but they've got the proper coil for it to go in to give you the 12 volts. So they've got to get the hallback array yet. So what? So what? A seat. So what motor? What what coil are you testing this motor on? Uh, the Saturn coil, the component coil, was what we were trying to, to make it run on, just with the component coil. Uh -huh. That's the, the coil with the capacitors and the MOSFETs and the resistors. And what were you driving that with? That, we've been driving it with flat DC, which it will never change polarity to make this motor spin with flat DC. Uh -huh. I've been saying that since we started this, but they've been stubborn on their end. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. We're all stubborn. We're never going to quit until we get this done. That's what matters. So if you're driving it with DC and then running, running it through a transformer, what does that do to it? <laughs> the, okay. We're, right now, we're driving it with DC, and that's wrong. It needs to go AC. Uh -huh. we're, we're, we're powering each leg of L1, L2, and L3 on the three-phase motor with a transformer. Right. Okay. So you've got your delta transformer built into two coils. Uh, let's call them coil A and coil B. Coil A is the, uh, the component coil and that has one transformer in it that half of that transformer is an electrical conductor. The other half is an inducted load onto it, an inducted charge onto it. So we've got electrical and magnetic in the same coil, in the same transformer on a coil. On B coil, we've got the first six circuits of B coil. One, three, and five are hooked together on one side that's inducted. Two, four, and six are the other side that's also inducted. On the bottom side, one, three, and five is inducted, and two, four, and six are inducted. So that's two more transformers for L2 and L3. Okay. Okay. I guess I'm just not, I'm not understanding. It's a DC motor. Yeah. And the coil was set up to be driven by an AC 12-volt. Uh, 
coral with a home back in it. The the and so you're, run, the, you're running it through a transformer circuit uh, through the coils uh, yeah. to convert AC to DC, but you you you've got DC input. Right, and the reason, no, we've got, well, right now we do, and the reason we need AC input is so that the polarity changes right. in the motors. Right, that's what I'm saying, that, that could be your whole problem. It is at this point with the DC power supply, yes. Okay, so the next step would be to, to get drive it with an AC power. Exactly, and that's what that's what my everyday partner is is working on today is okay. getting an AC power source. Okay, he's he's putting rheostats on a on a regular AC house plug to get the right voltage out of it. Right, cool. Because well, that makes sense to me now. Because uh, yeah, if you're driving it with DC and then you're trying to uh, convert it. From AC to DC, but you've got DC input. That, that, that doesn't seem like it would work. Well, it, it's a brushless DC motor, mm -hmm. and okay, let's discuss that. <coughs> a brushless DC motor, you give it DC, but as that motor turns, it's creating AC because the magnet. The magnetic field inside of it is going plus, plus, minus. Okay. On, on, off. On, on, off. Just like your heartbeat. It's got to go on, on, off to continue the rotation of that motor. That means that the polarity of, of the wire going to that motor has got to switch from positive to negative. Right, so that it, so that that motor knows, and that's where we're having our problem. Yeah, that's why we need the AC for it for the input. Yeah, but those the people that are testing the motor right now don't have a driver coil. Right, they don't have the AC for it. They'll have the haulback array. They've got the coil, but not the haulback array. Right. Yeah. Is that hard to do? Proper spiral wound coil. The haulback array. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a matter of 3D printing a, uh, a a cone, a funnel looking thing, and uh -huh. placing gluing the magnets into it. So it should be it's something. Easy thing. Yeah. So they should yeah. be able to get that done. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's coming up real soon. Okay, you guys keep going. I got, to, I got to go mute for a minute. Okay. okay. Uh, and our our guy in in uh, Sweden is he's got the 3D printer and he's printing up the holder for it and he's got the magnets. They he ordered them and received them. So all he's going to have to do is wait for his printer to finish up. And he should have that done by now because that was a couple of days ago that we last tested his equipment. Hmm. So the actual holdup in putting you where you are right now, having to do these drawings, comes down to other people's being stubborn or you're just going to try everything until it works? Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying everything till it works. I don't think that's stubborn, though, Larry. Well, it's necessary. It's dedication. That's yeah. thoroughness. Oh, Rob's back. It's I'm back. Well, I was just curious if it was a matter of somebody being stubborn and not listening to what would work and, and kind of slowing the process down to get to it. Well, we've well, got to try all this other shit first. No, you don't. Well, they, they think that it's a DC motor, so all you got to do is put DC to it. Well, yeah, that's right. If you're putting it through a controller board that switches the polarity of the DC, but we're using a coil as that controller board, so, so all the rules change. Right? AC going through it.
Right. So all the rules that you learned are kind of off to a side. You got to look at it from a different way. Yeah, most okay. of them. Yeah, most of them. I, I uh, picked that up. That was kind of the hold up. Yeah. Com- completing the circuit from positive to negative is the only thing electrical that still handle that still applies. Hmm. So to make your ideas work, all you need to do is not judge th- how they work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Forget yeah. about what you learned yeah. in the damn books because yeah. that doesn't cover it. Right. The books cover three Part of it. parts. And there's five parts. Yeah, the books cover we three, three, three dimensional. We're working in five D. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you've got to be able to visualize all of those fields as you're working with this stuff so that you can see what it's supposed to be doing at that time. Wow. That's so easy stuff, Larry. That's no. easier said than done. And, yeah. Wow, no wonder hands ran away calling me names. I didn't <laughs> want to hang around and listen to this either if I was an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> a little <laughs> flip of the tongue there. Uh, Some folks think I'm crazy, and it may be true, but I'm going to make this work if I have to take a hammer to it. Well, right, but when you introduce something new to somebody that is already an expert, you're you're fighting a current, yeah, huge current. Yeah, I would I would do better teaching a 14 year old about this than yeah. somebody yeah. that's been through school. Exactly, because I'm the 14 year old in the group as far as having any kind of uh, learning behind me. I'm just picking up ideas just based off what I already know. And they compare that to what you talk about, and they seem to come out with an answer. You agree with them, so I'm, I feel I'm holding my own in the classroom of Larry. Absolutely, absolutely, you're doing good. We're well, not going to go out and build a, a generator or anything, but I have friends that dabble in that kind of thing. Well, they might be able to come up with something that will help me. You never know. I, I still, I'm. Uh, we need to make some time to chat outside of the show so I can find out what it is you need and see if I can't help you. I need somebody that's good with electrical circuitry that understands the principle of a California three-way. Hold on. Oh, I got it on radio. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'll mark the time. Yeah. A California three-way. Now you're getting kinky on us. What the hell? Absolutely. Well, that's the reason that this works. That's the reason that everything that this consumes, you can sell back to the power company. Uh-huh. The California three-way simply switches the neutral. Okay, so you've got a light fixture in the ceiling, and you want to change the light fixture. Oh, well, that's well, totally you, different than what I was thinking about. When you, when you switch the hot wire... <laughs> That means that when you turn that light switch off, that fixture is no longer hot, except the neutral, and the neutral is carrying the unbalanced load from that circuit back to the panel, so that neutral will still bite you, but the hot wire is not hot. So you can take that fixture down safely, but with the California three-way, that fixture is always hot until you turn the breaker off. Because you're just switching the neutral. And that neutral is what carries the complete load of that circuit back to the panel and dumps it back to the power company on their neutral line. Right. You don't want to do that. You want to sell it to them. So you put a meter on that neutral and sell it to them. And, and that's how this whole system works, is the entire system is hot. All the capacitors are charged all the time. All you're doing is completing the circuit by connecting the neutral. Well, you got a little interest out of Moose in the chat room when you, when you were, said you were looking for students, basically. Okay. Yeah, Moose is, Moose is saying her son is uh, uh, 
could do it. He's a really smart kid. He wants to be an electrical engineer. There well, there you go. Get him connected to Uncle Larry. Yeah. Or put, set him on your Facebook page. Yeah. yeah. But there's so much stuff you can do with this. It's just right now, uh, huh. the laws are working again. Well, I'm, I'm really anxious and curious to, to see this motor thing get worked out because that's, that's going to be key. Okay, and I'm interested in to figure out how does that California three-way translate to Denmark because they use a 220 over here, first off, and they speak another language, so the slang might be different. Okay. You know, it might mean something else than California. You might say Polish. I don't know. Well, I, I don't know how Denmark is, but Sweden, it, it, switching to neutral is against the rules in the United States. Yeah, yeah. Switching to neutral. Okay, that's because the light fixture is always hot or the appliance is always hot. Switching to neutral in Sweden is a good thing. In Norway, they do that. So maybe, maybe they switch it where you're at. Maybe well, Scandinavia, hot. yeah, they're... They're per they try to be as independent of the EU as they can be. So, most well, of the countries you're just talking about, yeah, they're, they stay away from the, the mandate as much as they can. California Freeway is, is just uh, what switching we call the neutral. It. Yeah, it's just switching the neutral. That'll and just be a matter of, of uh, language. I'll, I'll find a way to explain that to him. It was the California Freeway that had me kind of worried. Yeah, it it's just just means switching the neutral, so the appliance is always hot, the load is always hot. I've I've got to step out for a second. You guys keep going. Okay. Yeah, we're 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 gonna keep you entertained and Rob's ass. We can do this. Anyway, so, so that uh, my thing was just a matter of how to ask him because. That might not translate so well here and, you know, end up in some argument. Hey, what are you trying to talk about my wife? <laughs> yeah, no, I want to, well, do you know about switching the neutral? Then, you know, put me back down in a bar stool and calm down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's I just cut out the middleman. And, and I, I think probably that in your country they do that as a standard. Right. I, I'm leaning that way. As well, there's a lot more freedom. We we still have a burn pit in the backyard, We're, yeah. you know, and we live on a main main thoroughfare that goes through city. So they're yeah, they don't not trust us to watch ourselves as much as other countries. Yep, that's very much the bottom line of that. But it it is interesting, and I, but I, the last couple of weeks I've been kind of busy myself. And haven't been a social butterfly going out and about. So, but I'll get around to being a lazy prick probably next week, and I'll, I'll go looking for my buddy. <laughs> well, got to start somewhere. And then Moose was talking about her son. He's dying to get into what you know how to do. There you go. And we're all online. It's not like wow. There's no excuses anymore. We got time. Make time. All I've all I've got to say is that. People that are wanting to do any kind of free energy, any it's not free to start with, any kind of over unity type work. You've got to remember that what they taught you in school will not allow that to happen. So you've got to you've got to empty your cup before you can fill it up. You can't come to this with a full cup. I know everything there is to know about electricity because I'm an electrical engineer. Hmm. Well, how it, how this uh, equates in my way is I got a friend I was showing yesterday a, a thing of the Ford uh, hemp mobile from the 1940s. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's like 26 years old. He didn't even know about it. Never heard of it. Never saw it. Didn't know they could do it. So, he, I mean, outside of the rumors he's read growing up about, well, they can make anything out of hemp, but sitting here watching him watch the video of the guy with the axe trying to dent the, the Ford car, and it just didn't work. He didn't get nowhere with it. They broke the ice, 
and that was it. <laughs> Not even the paint job got more. Nothing. Yep. Well, we live in this disposable freaking 2020, and everybody hates everybody and all this bullshit. And I sit around with kids, and we watch the, you know, interesting things on the Internet. Yeah. Um, Go figure. Right. And kids, to me, are in their 20s. Is I got children that old, you know? So, hmm. But, yeah, I'd, uh, I'd call everybody a kid these days. Right, you know, right. Example. But the, the, the people I'm talking to, the, as young as you're, between 20 and 30, and when I meet them and speak to them, they sound like circle. The same, that same mentality that cert carries. It's kind of universal around here. I just didn't know it went to the youth. Good. Yeah. I, I'm getting uh, told about. Uh, the 21 year old girl is telling me she has rights regarding this mask bullshit. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> blah 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 blah. Well, it going out of three barber shops yesterday. But but Larry, it's the idea. I'm here where it's supposed to be, you know, locked down and horrible and all that, and it's not. People here go, "Fuck you, take yeah. your mask and shove it." But the working class that don't want to create a stir and make a big scene. They're compliant, and they, they make jokes about it. They, they openly talk about it. It's ridiculous. It's like a, like a joke. Yep. Well, and then there's people on, in, where I'm from. I, they're shooting each other in the street. Nobody knows why. Yeah. They're just do yeah. it. There's no Everybody reason for so none of it. Fed up. Well, I fed I, up with this bullshit. And, I, and I'm running around with people in that age group that are, like, nonviolent, don't want any part of that nonsense, and are more interested in what you're talking about <laughs> than what's on the news and shit like that. They don't, they don't do any of that. No. Yeah. But still have an awareness about life as a grown-up? How do you do that without, without watching TV? Yeah. They did. I didn't. Because I, you know, grew up in that era, just didn't it didn't uh, indoctrinate me. I went the other way. I'm an outlaw. Hansel will tell you all about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I get really defensive when somebody tells me I've got to do something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't do that. That's the first thing I try. I'm sorry, Larry. No, you're you're a little quieter this week than usual too. Are you oh, on the I'm, headphones or are you on the mic? Yeah, I'm I'm on the headphones, but I'm leaning over my drawing. Ah, there you are. Ah, I'm better. inking. I can hear you better now. Okay, I'll just put the microphone closer to me. Your stories make the show. Oh, so right. It's more important to hear your your wonderful voice clear and oh. such. Well, you know, you you get people's attention when you talk. You got I'm not giving you a raise. <clears throat> oh, I'm not right. giving you a raise. Well, 10% of nothing is still nothing. <laughs> In that case, we'll double your salary. <laughs> it sounds like my wife. Oh, my goodness. No, I'm, I'm kidding. And we were, uh, we were giving away vegetables and such. We're doing Do you have a permit for that? Don't need one. Do oh. you know that? Yeah, nobody complains. People... And people all compliment the, the wife for what she grew. Yeah. Mm. Isn't that nice? Yeah, it's Isn't it amazing. Amazing what you do for them? Yeah, and they go, well, I have one friend. He says, well, I'm not too fond of the tomatoes, but I like cucumbers. And they're oh. eating this shit right off the freaking vine in the backyard with us, right? Oh, yeah. And, well, the one guy, Daniel, got an overripe um, pick. And he went, oh, no, this is no good. I said, oh, hold on. She gets her another one. Oh, that's much better. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, I mean, wow. To, but that kind of trust, you know, a guy comes over to, to do me a favor, and he ends up having <laughs> garden vegetables and climbing a tree. But Sounds good to me. It's a weird life, Larry. It, it's, it's like I make it up as I'm talking. <laughs> Even living it seems like, nah, this isn't happening. But it's happening. Uh, I'm stalling until Rob gets back. So let's if, see. If we all grew a garden and taught the kids how to grow a garden, make it interesting for them. 
Exactly. And their problem is they don't have the space. They're apartment livers. And me and Sir got a little bit of land in the back of the house. So there's room to grow a few things if we want to. You know, and so she decided she was going to learn how to do it a couple of years ago. And now she's getting a reputation down in the local village. Cool. Well, one of the, my friends owns a bar. Oh. So, yeah. and Well, him and his wife, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so I take the vegetables down to, to the wife. they got a restaurant bar. Sometimes they serve food. Sometimes they oh, don't. Yeah, food. fresh veggies at the restaurant. Yes. But. Exactly, and this is rural Denmark. This isn't you know, signs the paper land. Yeah, they they try to make it look like that on on the news and all, like it's some big restrictive hellhole. <laughs> Jeez, I think I, I see the cops about once on an average in six years living here, once every three to four months. <laughs> Good, and sometimes it'll be like. Twice in a month, but then nothing for five. You know, just don't run across them when they come by. And when they do, they're they're pleasant and they're nice. They just go on their way. They're not unless they're pulling traffic over. Then they're pricks. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what they're supposed to be in that case. Right, exactly, and that's they fill the suit, you know. But they don't shoot anyone. Uh, I've never seen them beating anybody. <laughs> None of that shit. Yeah, you don't have any fun at all. And some of these idiots smoke their hash right out in the freaking you know street. When you walk by them, you know they're smoking hash. They don't yeah. even give a shit if, if you care or not. They're beyond all that nonsense. So instead of, you know, like they're, they're not doing anything wrong in the first place. So it's like normal here. <laughs> it's <laughs> weird. Yeah, well... I come from persecution land where the police are large and the land is small. Yeah. So I didn't have have this kind of luxury when I was growing up. The space and all the, the ability to just be whatever the fuck you are. And people either avoid you or they befriend you, one or the other. There's yeah. no, yeah, there's no buddy attacking anyone here or no violence, nothing. It's boring. And I don't care which. Yeah, I'm telling you, I've never been so bored in my whole damn life. <laughs> <laughs> but see, that was that's what I learned is I was being used by a system to perform an act. And when I realized that, fuck you people, I'm I'm retired. I ain't doing that anymore. Yeah, I don't play that game. But what? Well, then I traded up for a you know a Danish marriage, but it, it's. <laughs> It's so much nicer than where I'm from. I don't know. I hadn't been that happy before. So. Yeah, but the world's all falling apart, and you found some way to make a coil that don't get hot. Yeah. It, can the, it can change the future. And, you know, the people that don't want you to change the future are these idiots that are writing laws and holding seats of power. They want yep. shit just like it is or worse. And the worse it is, the better they like it because they make more money off us. Yes. And that's one of the reasons that we're doing this is because a, a transformer is only 60% efficient at best. Unless you pay the extra money and, and get them to wind one special for you. See, wind one special for you. Wow, that, shouldn't, that sentence shouldn't even exist. Yep. But... And they blame that on capitalism instead of greed. Yeah. Because if everybody had the same knowledge to make a product with it, you wouldn't have global industry anymore. People would just go to the guy down the street and have him do it. Yeah. That's what big business doesn't want. That's why they did all this shit in the last year, just killing them off. Yeah. Somehow there's going to be a magic election in November that's going to fix everything. <laughs> Welcome to Palestine. Bend over the table. We are going to do the search. Oh, yeah. You'll see. Now, I've been harping on this for years, Larry. I, I don't mean to bring it to the coil. Whoops, be bad. <laughs> I'll well, save it for the dork table. <laughs> no, it, it's all the same. It's, it's all right. 
they, they're well, trying to control us any way they can. They're trying to keep the system the way it is so that they can profit from it, and we don't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's that money tied up in just a few greedy little Jew fingers. and it's it, Yeah. But we've all been raised to, to uh, glorify it and praise it like celebrity, like it's some great thing. To oh, yeah, he's them. a movie star. He's got to be right. Yeah, the Prince of Wales is preaching about uh, people, how badly people are treated. What the fuck does he know about how badly people are treated? Really? Idiots. And the idiots that listen to some moron like that with his theories and his goddamn papers. With, this is the whole problem I've had my whole life is the educated and the, the, you know, the civil are the ones that got us where we are. And they, yep. blame, and they blame the victims of their greed for all the shit that goes wrong. <laughs> Preaching to the choir. It's a completely fucked up, upside down world. And it's not getting any better looking at it. Whatever I'm, you know, the one I'm physically in is not the one I refer to verbally. <laughs> yeah. Don't know how that worked out. It's like the impossible. <laughs> Well, the first thing Larry said good on the show about was Sweden. <laughs> yeah. Um, our neighbors to the east. <laughs> yeah, we, we've we got a really good member of the R&D team in Sweden. Uh, he's one of the founders of the group, in fact. Uh, he was working with the uh, Bedini Motors to begin with, and then... When I brought this to his attention, he realized that through the Bedini Motors, they couldn't get the over unity that they were looking for, and that the coils were the answer to that. So, well, is there more room for more qualified fellows and ladies to join this? Is has it that gotten to that point yet? It hasn't gotten to that point yet. Uh -huh. uh, We've got people in that are cosmetic people uh, to to help us design the outer shell of these things to make them look pretty. Yeah. Uh, we've yeah. got advertising people. Uh, we've got scientists of all kinds, all kinds, mechanical, computer, 3D printing, to you name it, and we've got somebody in the field. Um, it strikes me that the more fields that you get involved in your project, the more people, the more people there are, the bigger it can get. Well, yeah, but at this point, we want to get something working <laughs> before you know, we I, add any help. All this stuff has been done over and over. you got to go through the process of eliminating the shit that don't work. Yeah. It's, it's not the same. It's different. You're, yeah. you're looking for the needle in the haystack. You're you're not looking for the haystack, you know, in on a Google map of Kansas. No, you, you're, but it's the same kind of idea, but you're a little bit more limited. I'm back. Yeah, there's, there's only a few things that will work. And exactly, but you got to try everything possible so everybody knows this doesn't work. Yeah. The op okay, we weren't raised to learn that way. Remember, we were raised, this is the answer, and if you answer the correct way, you get rewarded, and if you answer the not the correct way, you're an idiot. Yeah. How many, well, how uh, many different filaments did Einstein, or Einstein, did Edison try before he got the right tungsten filament? Hundreds. There's <laughs> over a hundred. I know that. Answers. Yeah. So, yeah, it, I'm not discouraged at all. I'm encouraged by the extra knowledge that we've been gaining just just by making mistakes, <laughs> seeing, seeing what it will make the motor do and what it won't make the motor do and figuring out why. So, yeah, we've, we've come really a long way uh, in these past few weeks. And that's why I missed last week is that uh, our Swedish guy, Thursday was the only day he had to test. And we had two new designs to try out, which neither one of them worked, but 
that's because it's DC. Well, uh, yeah, plus he went commercial. <clears throat> so that limits things, too. Yeah. Then you start getting your industrial secrets. And, uh, it gets complicated. Yeah, we, we went to three phases of single phase. Single phase, the very first drawing works for single phase. It makes the light bulb light up. Three light bulbs light up. All at the same time. And that's not what we're looking for. Okay. But that, that particular drawing is is the one that's going to be for our residential section where the light has to stay on all the time. So it, it wasn't wasted. It just didn't work for three phase. And I should have known that because three phase and single phase are different. And the difference is the square root of three. Is, and that's where, where the AC phase and the <laughs> single phase. Is that where that AC answer came to you? Yeah. <clears throat> So, if it goes against the rules, it's more than likely going to work. <laughs> oh, wow. What a science to be playing with. They say you can't do this. Hold my beer. Watch this. Yeah, watch. Hide and watch. Well, I, I, I've heard some pretty disturbing things about you know, schools in America, like the high schools. Oh, past years ago, right? kid was in a science class, made something blow up, and they arrested her for some kind of a terrorist law. Mm -hmm. A teenager in a school because she made something blow up. Yeah. Like, well, if it's an experiment, how do you blame somebody for something that happened as a result of an experiment? Yeah, I think she's doing them volcano things or something like that. Yeah, but... Okay, then it wasn't an experiment at all that they're charging her for. They're charging her for doing something violent. See, yeah, it's a word game, man. Yeah. yeah they're, did you do it on purpose, or did you just make a mistake? And either way, are the results really your responsibility, either if you did it on purpose or it was a mistake? What difference does that really make? I would think it was the teacher's problem for not being able to supervise the students properly. Yep. Well, if something goes wrong, is that really something? See, that's, I look at experimenting with stuff where shit will go wrong. You expect that. Absolutely. So to be negative towards the result and punishing people is kind of stupid. Yep. But I might be living in the 1970s. Never know. Hmm. I've been accused of worse. You know, I've been called a pothead. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for years. You know what I am? But you not bothered by being called a pothead, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't seem to insult me at all. Go ahead. Next. Right. Okay, so seriously now. Where uh I was I tried to bring up is there room for expansion? And that covers a lot of territory, but then you, you kind of drifted off and I interrupted. Room for expansion? Yeah. It, what would well, you like to expand? You mean more voltage, voltage and amperage? See, that's what I mean. Is that just that statement takes you places I would never go, Larry? I don't have yeah. no idea. You're, oh. this, is, this is for you to get your points across. I just try to come up with a, a question to ask that might get you your brain cooking. Yeah. Uh, these these systems, the the beauty of them is you can increase the amperage by adding a different coil. You can increase the voltage by adding still a different coil. So we've got one coil that boosts the amperage up 40 to 1 now, and we've got one coil that boosts the voltage up 1,000 to 1 now. So, uh, bring it on. Uh, whatever, whatever it is, whatever you want to do, we can have a combination of coils that can provide that proper energy for you. It's just if we got to get the same phase worked out. Yeah, if you're prepared to put aside what you already believe you know. I don't care if you believe you know it or not. All you got to do is buy a unit. <laughs> who, cares, who cares if you know why it works? 
You don't have to believe it. You don't have to believe it. You just plug it in. <laughs> just, I was still on the yeah. Here, just plug it in. Uh, <laughs> believe this. <it. laughs> well, I'm still still going through your, your drawings and having to convince somebody that, well, you, you've got to add this when that person listening is already going to tell you before you speak, you, that's not going to work. No, you can't do it like uh, that. I know. I'm still in that conversation. So I, just, I, I hadn't got to the sales part or none of that. I, I just need a system that will put out 96 volts, 400 amps, DC. 96 volts and 400 amps would probably take about 10 coils. Yeah, that's for that motor I was talking about. That's for a 70 or 100 horsepower motor. Yeah. That comes out to 38 kilowatts. And that 100 horsepower motor is pretty good size. It's not huge for industry, but it's huge for small industry. It's about the right size to run a sailboat. <laughs> a big sailboat. You're talking a 50-footer. Yeah, yeah, a sailboat. Yeah. Not a toy. Not a toy. <laughs> Talking about a real sailboat. You mean it's not just barely big enough for one guy to sit in? Actually, I need two of those for my sailboat. My, the sailboat I want is a 70-foot catamaran. Ooh, mama. It's only two. Your low expectations. Only, it's only $2 million. You get that $300 million contract with about two of them. Wow, <laughs> mm, <that was> fishing. <laughs> how much do you well, think? You know, how much do you think one of these rich fuckers would pay for a boat that you can take across the ocean and have AC the whole way? Well, you know how yeah. the Jews define the word boat. Boat uh, is a hole in the water that people throw money into. That's it. Mm. Boat, B-O-A-T. They got another thousand. Well, it's a rich man yeah. or, a pirate, or a pirate sport. It's not for poor people. Boats, stay away from boats. If you can't bother with a car, stay the fuck off the boat. Boats will bury you. It's like having a hundred Harleys. Mm -hmm. Well, you use a boat to go out to the water. And you know what? Water and oxygen are not the same. You get a you get a boat wet and shit happens to it. Did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. I just want to sell the damn thing. <laughs> uh, you guys crack me up. Anyway, I don't <laughs> fish, so I really don't, and I don't care to travel anymore. So I've got no needs. And that fucked us. I'm not a greedy prick. And I <laughs> you need a hundred Harleys to keep three of them running. A <laughs> hundred what? Grim says you need a hundred Harleys to keep three of them running. Oh, yeah. Isn't that? It's a terrible, it's a terrible trap. But it's a rich man's sport. So buy a Harley. If you got the money, blow it. The fuck yep. does it matter? That's it. Twenty right there. dollars. Hey, did you guys see that shit from Sturgis with the Antifa guys? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's the fucking biker. Yeah. Oh, that boy, lucky the police were there. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, the guy with the purple hair? Yeah. 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 He's lucky I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> the, I'd have crawled right up his left know. leg, man. That fucking prick. Uh -huh. I've seen him kick at that fucking... Boy. What a prick. Yeah. yeah. The, the people that I know that ride bikes would have ripped his leg off for him. Yeah. Just fuck Yeah, him. and beat him to death with it. What, yeah, yep. the cops, they had ten cops. They protected his little ass. Well, yeah. the oh, they got him out of there quick, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> fuck, yeah. But anyway, I was sickly amused by seeing that big gorilla act like a girl and kick at a moving Harley and then get stomped by ten guys bigger than him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I got a it's kind of a sick 
like sense of satisfaction out of it. I shouldn't have done that. I mean, I don't mind you not liking this, not liking that. But when you kick at somebody's rolling by you and you kick at their wheel, <laughs> even jesting, what if you freak and you saw that kick coming and you panic <clears throat> and you spill your bike? Whoa, that's not nice. That'll get you an ass looking quick. Well, we have bicyclists that ride by us when we walk here in Denmark, okay? And motorcycles, but the, the bike path is part of the walkway, kind of. Yeah. So we got to always be aware of each other is out here. You know? Yep. And sure, and if the, your dog jumped at somebody riding by on a bike, it would floor and knock him off the bike. Yes. So can you imagine the damage you could do kicking a hose? Yeah. Holy shit. And there's like a quarter million bikers there? That's the damn What do you could do? Wow, it's a miracle they didn't cook that fucker on an open spit and feed him to the homeless. Yes, exactly. The exactly. bikers, yeah, the bikers outnumbered the cops like a lot. So mm -hmm. they were good enough to back off and okay, we'll let this go. And I consider what you know being arrested for it is way better than what the fucking cop bikers would have done. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh sure. yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But, hey, you know, that's what your, uh, that's what your message is, is to interfere and cause trouble. Nah, I don't like it. But it seems like all, all the, all the groups want the same thing. They want to control other groups. Yeah, it's similar to the, the law restricting you in America, Larry. You know? Yeah. For the safety of the people, we're not going to let you make something that works. <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, I got a chemotherapy appointment at three. Anybody want to drive me? <laughs> I'm feeling a little wobbly today. Rob, can you see my picture? Uh-oh. It's showing off on the wire. Is it on the wire? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there you go. I see that too. I'm snooping, so I won't talk about it. But I'm looking. <laughs> so here we go. That's the colored in drawing. It's one that's been inked. This is our next attempt. Can you read that, Rob? Uh oh. Did we lose Rob? <laughs> yep. We scared him off. Sorry, no. that I was muted. Oh, you muter. Anyway, uh, I'm, sitting here, I'm sitting there carrying on a conversation. <laughs> you know? Y'all <laughs> were, were responding and everything. <laughs> I got, I got uh, smoke. Anyhow, yeah, I see it. I see it. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Can you read that? I just did. I mean, no, 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 no. That's not the... Don't. <laughs> no, I can't see the little print. No, oh, can you, uh, no, no, no. I don't mean C. I mean, can you understand what you're looking at by looking at the... Well, it is a wiring diagram for 12 circuit coil. For two uh, of them. Two 12 circuit not, coils. But this, this is just on wire. This isn't on the mainstream right, right now. Right, no. Nobody else is able to see it. Right. So yeah. they don't have any idea what the hell we're talking about now. <laughs> That's okay. Keep that them in your heart. Anyway... Um, well, my question to you, Rob, was, all right, you, you can't read that as a, a math equation. A math equation? It a you don't know, like the same as where, where it, you interpret it. It means something to it's you. It's a circuit diagram, yeah. It's just a way of wiring up the coil. But you the understood coils. that by those numbers and how they were written. Basically, yeah. Wow. See, I can't do that. I don't have well, that. Well, each one of those numbers represents a wire coming off the coil. Yes. Right. I've sat down and been told stuff, but I've not physically done anything. So I've just been listening and yeah. watching a few. Things. Yeah. I get it. I just, I just know you know more about it, but I wasn't sure if you could read, just look at that mm. and know what it meant by seeing it. Yeah, I comprehend it. Wow. Okay. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't read the labels on it, but I understood. I understand what it is and. If I had a wow. two trial circuit coils, I could wire it up. 
God. Yeah. No wonder Hans calls me a dumbass. I couldn't. I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> well, I doubt he could either. <laughs> that was sneak. That was sneak and funny. God. Well, the, the way I draw up my electrical drawings, I make them Larry proof because yeah. Larry is an yeah. idiot. <laughs> I wouldn't go to that. Makes mistakes. I do it all the time. Some mistakes. Yes. Yeah, if, if, if you're an idiot, you're an idiot savant because you've built something that nobody else has been able to do. Well, so far I have well, at least not that we're, we've been allowed to be aware of. Anyway. Yeah. If you weren't being with well, withheld or withheld, held back and restricted, right? Then. Oh, I bet if, if we had access to all the patents that were that were classified, uh, um, get away with all that patent shit altogether. If you just bypassed all that shit and built something, exactly, it would be a different world. But we're not allowed to do that by law. It's fucking ridiculous. Freedom. I'm so fucking tired of people telling me about freedom. You can't build anything without permission from the fucking state. You yeah. well, can't start a business. Can't do anything. You can you can you can reproduce a patent for your own personal use. Yeah, you just can't market it. Can't market it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, whatever. Uh, and I I just don't think that anybody in the planet should own uh, intelligence and or I knowledge or or concepts or what. However you define intellectual knowledge. property, I I agree. Uh, uh, yeah, kiss my intellectual ass. What do you think of that? Ah, where do you, like yeah, where do, you, where do you think that idea came from? But then again, I'm not an educated man, so who am I to have an opinion like that? <laughs> who said I've had it for educated. a long time, so that's the comeback I usually get. I'd well, say you don't know anything. Who the fuck do you think you are? <laughs> I'd say you're more educated than most. Well, no, I come in handy in, in situations where uh, other people are either afraid or uh, or don't have a clue to where to start. They they don't know how to function it works. Like uh, we had the the uh, the basement here had a, like a foot of water when before we moved into it. Mm -hmm. I figured out how to get this pump going and get it out of the basement. There you go. But Sirk had no idea how to do it. So, yeah, we each, well, yeah, each person in in the mm -hmm. game that I play, whatever this life thing is, knows something I don't know, and I know shit they don't know, and then certain things happen, and my knowledge comes in play, and I show them, oh, I can do that. Yeah, and that's well, really the biggest happens. the biggest part of making anything happen is the willingness to try. But that's Larry's it. idea is a lot bigger than anything I've ever thought of doing. Oh, bullshit. Oh, yeah, Larry, you, you've helped me a lot just with the idea of it. You kidding? It's an eye-opener. So, Larry. It puts, it puts money in, in its place. Even though you got to use it to do shit and blah, blah, blah. It Don't let it be your god. It's not. It, energy is. <laughs> They're they're holding back how we can get it because well it it leads to a situation where we will no longer be dependent exactly and we're being held back by people and some people don't know that some people know that and don't give a shit and then there's us <laughs> right well so Larry did you have any time this week or the last two weeks to go fishing yes oh, fishing report man. yes you get time notes. I took last Saturday off and did not, did not take my fishing buddy with me because uh -huh. he caught seven and I caught zero the last time we were out. Oh. He, doesn't get to go, he doesn't get to go again until I <laughs> get you seven. Get seven more. <laughs> That's it. I, I got three last time. Uh, one catfish and two bass. Uh, we're still catching catfish on that little bitty crankbait, and that's really fun. You think you got a big bass, but it's yeah, not. It's a cat. Huh? It's a cat, yeah. But they pull good, and they're slimy and nasty and get yucky stuff all over the, the line, but they're fun <laughs> to play with. Uh, but it, it was a beautiful day. I, I could not have asked for better weather. 
the wind was blowing maybe three miles an hour at most, uh, which just barely moved me down the shoreline that I wanted to fish. Uh, I could stay in one spot and fish it as long as I wanted to if I figured there was a fish there, and I made a lot of mistakes there because there weren't fish. But it was fun. Good day. Cool. And the, and the shag bark hickory trees are putting on lots and lots and lots of hickory nuts this year, mm. so it's going to be a good season for hickory nuts. Yeah, cool. I don't even know if I've even had a hickory nut. I know I've been called one, but you really <laughs> missed out on a good nut. There's not a whole lot of meat in them, but it is delicious. Mm. Hmm. Familiar, yeah. Well, there's there's other things in life: cashews, oh yeah, cans, walnuts. I'm partial. Yeah, there's variety. So I, I'm partial to cashews I, myself. And to yeah, yeah, so they, yeah and I'm old enough to where if I didn't if I didn't get to try it by now, I didn't. I don't look like I missed it. I don't <laughs> like that idea. I just figure I went a different road, got something else. Yep. Because you guys love boats, and I'm telling you, I've been on a ton of freaking ferries to travel from islands to the mainland and all that. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't really, I don't get seasick either. It doesn't bother me or nothing. But I don't care to, I don't care for the water. <laughs> if I never see another boat again, don't bother me. Cirque loves to take the dog to the beach. I don't want to go to the beach. Fuck the beach. <laughs> well. There's water at the beach. Yeah, that's why it's a beach. So I, I'm either a pa- pirate or a Palestinian, and I don't want to go out in the water. Hmm. There's such a thing as a land pirate. <laughs> 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 I might have to start my new, my, uh, what do you call it? When, faction. I saw this me- TV movie, I think TV, HBO or TV, something like that. And it was about the future and the future in, has been sectioned off into five factions for the society to function. And everybody left out after that is like a, a leftover. <laughs> and you don't want to be a leftover. But what the problem of, of the story was, the person there, the movie is about is called a divergent because they don't fit in any of the five designations. I saw that movie. Ah, okay. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. So, it, you know, I, I just... No I so mops. Familiar. <laughs> well, because I tried to fit in their games, but I just never... They never liked me. I never got chosen. <laughs> <laughs> now, but... See, and it takes a film in my, you know, when I'm 60 years old to really get a, a good physical fucking look at how all that worked out and how it, how it really went. Yeah. Because it was like a, you know, a dramatic explanation of your indoctrination into school and your youth and all that. And then they got this one, this one person that has the problem is she thinks for herself. <laughs> Damn. So, yeah, and when you can think for yourself, no matter if you're qualified to fit into one of the five factions, well, you got to go because you'll change the shit. Fuck you. Yep. Yeah. Bad, huh, Larry? Yep. Be like me or die. Yeah. So on you television, people are right. they're being programmed to accept that as a normal way to treat each other. This shit's deep. I mean, Larry kind of talks about the frequencies being bad for us and all that to a level. But I think it's a lot worse than even I I know. I'm just scratching the glass here a little bit. I guess from the common sense side and coming out with it, they're fucking us, aren't they, John? Speaking a lot worse than you don't know about, uh... COVID-19 is not the name of a disease. COVID-19 is the name of a program to eliminate 80% of the world's population. Hmm. Yeah, I read that. Every, every test that they give, what they're testing for, 
99% of the population of the world has that in them already. So yeah. the test the tests are positive or negative according to how they feel at that moment. Uh, I will go even further and say the tests have nothing to do with the disease. They have to do with gathering DNA. Right. And, and the tests also provide a disease for you. This gives you a disease. The more times you're tested, the faster that disease will manifest. Uh, I got one part I want to throw at you too I, I read this the other day it depends on the frequency the test is given on to get the positive or the negative yeah okay I, I don't remember the numbers but I remember the, the, the idea okay okay good maybe you could explain how that works because it made sense to a point and then hmm. hey Larry break this down a little bit for me will you <laughs> But I get the idea, but so if they give you a test at a frequency, how the hell do they pull that off in the first place? What does that mean? Well, there's ambient noise, ambient radio waves and frequency in the air, and it depends on the type of location. Uh, I don't know what frequencies that they're using or what frequencies will help them, but if they if they manage to use uh, three seven and nine on the harmonics, three seven and nine are what the fluorescent lights put out. So if that stimulated it, then if you were under fluorescent light, you'd test positive. Yeah. I'm just I'm just using that as, as an a, example. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That's the truth of the matter. That's, that's how they can do it, not necessarily the specific way they did it. Yeah. It's the circumstances around the test that give you the positive or the negative, not the person you're testing. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's what I was looking for. Because 99% of the people that they test, probably more, have got that in them. If well, everybody, ever had, everybody has everybody. antibodies. Yeah. If, if you've ever had a cold, you've got that in you. Ever. Yeah. So, you know, they're, they're testing for something that everybody should have anyway. Yeah. Get lying about it. Yeah. Might as well just be testing to see if you have blood in your veins. Yeah. yeah or, yeah. And, and the test is... Never mind. <laughs> no, don't never mind. Yak, fucker, yak. <laughs> well, talk show. Dead air is bad. Bad for business. I have to yell at you. <laughs> the the original test that they gave you with that long swab that they stuck up your nose, that had to touch the sack around your brain. That's oh how God. far they shoved that fucker in there. I didn't if they, get a test. If if they had to if they had to implant a microchip in somebody, that's the very best place to do it because they can scan your brain waves and figure out what you're thinking, whether you're in a violent mood or a passive mood, whether you're horny or sleepy or what. Okay. Well, now I'm confused one more time for the for the slow people, because how that sounded to me was like are you telling me. I'm going to test your eyesight, Lou. And I go, okay. Now, bend over and pull your pants down. Now, I'm going to stick my thumb up your butt. That's it. And <laughs> how, how is this supposed to test my eyesight? Well, it's not. It's to test your compliance. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Well, I'm negative Nelly, man. I come across and go, hey, what's in it for me, man? <laughs> and if there ain't anything in it for me, then I know it's a Jew doing it to me, and I ain't going to happen. I don't fall. <laughs> <laughs> Wearing a mask means keep your mouth shut and kneel down. Yep. Bow your I fucking head. Yep. Wear your fucking yep. muzzle. Exactly. Well, see, and there's people that... Um, are playing along with that political shit here right now. Yeah. Pissing yeah. me off. Well, yeah. Sir, Sir can beat it because she, she got a sister that lives near where they work at the same place and her sister lives closer to where they work. 
So now instead of coming home on the commute, she just stays over at her sister's if there's two days in a row to go to work. You know? <laughs> oh, they're punishing us, man. I'm telling you. Yeah. Well, if she didn't get along with her family, I would think it would be a torture, but they're thick as thieves. So the, the not being it five days a week now, instead, now they get to have a night where they can gossip and catch up and whatnot. Yeah, that's cool. And instead of being able to do it every day, well, tight family. I've never seen anything like it. That's always nice. We need to see more. We need to see more of that. She did wear a mask on the train to not be a, uh, to not cause a problem and be you know. She did it out of respect for the other people that believe the bullshit. No, 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 no. She did it to not be a thorn in the side of the reality. She's not for it. No, but she doesn't want the attention of, I'm not doing this. She's grown up. She grew up since she married me. Damn it. Remember just the other day, she was just that little girl just acting out like a 35-year-old? Hmm. Now look at her. She's in 40-damn-year-old. <laughs> Never mind. How did you trade her in for two 20-year-olds? Oh, yeah, that shit. There's a death sentence for you. <laughs> yeah. I can't handle the one. Two, two would put me in a coma. <laughs> what a way to go. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not like that. I'm not looking forward to croaking, but I sure as hell would hate that. would be a terrible way to go out for me. No, 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 no. I want to go sitting on the porch with my old lady watching the mushroom cloud go up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's how selfish I am. I'm taking everybody with me when I... I just want to go to sleep. No, I go. <laughs> God, that works. Dreamer. <clears throat> the only way yeah. to go. It's the only way to go, man. Just, yeah, not like the passengers on my Uncle Jack's bus. <laughs> I want to be asleep. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, some people are old enough to know that joke without all of the joke. I'm not that old, but I know the joke. Oh, you don't? About the bus driver. I do know the joke. joke. Yeah, I do know the joke. Yeah. I just said it really strangely to try to not plagiarize. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I'm hanging around with younger people, musicians, okay? And. One of the things we agree on it, there's nothing left to create musically. Yeah. There's nothing, period. But Every note has been it, played. It's all been done, no matter. And beyond that, with all the toys and gizmachis, every sound has been created. We've, we've done it all. Somebody did it. Somebody recorded it. So now there's n nothing left but to watch their watch old rerun shit or do your own. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. I'm going to have live musical people coming over to my living room to entertain me. Absolutely. Sounds great. Well, yeah, but it, life brings you, I guess, what you're looking for. I've always said that shit. It must be my transition, you know, where I'm getting comfortable and now I'm ready to do, you know, do what the next step of my little whatever path is. You know, Larry's is an electrician. Rob, Rob's a grump, <laughs> and, and and you know I've got my t my personal things too, but it took me forever to get comfortable enough to bother with them. So hmm. I was yeah. taking five minutes to brag about how wonderful life he is in a time where most people are complaining. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I haven't been here a lot of good news lately, I'll tell you that. Yeah, well, not you know, much of that local, going around. Local folks and, you know, in-laws. That's why I look forward to Thursdays. <laughs> so you can learn something you didn't know. Yeah, yeah. And it's something to look forward to. I like talking on Thursdays. I, it helps me clear my mind and get in my mind what I should be thinking about the rest of the week. Do you get, uh, when you get it, like, inspired <clears throat> while you're talking about something? 
Absolutely. Yesterday, I I finally found a barber that would let me into the barber shop without a mask. Yay! Yay! I got thrown out of three barber shops yesterday. Damn. Because I did not wear a mask. Our city ordinance or our county ordinance or regulation, whatever the hell they call it, says that if a mask distresses you or you have a medical condition that you need more oxygen than normal folks, like COPD or bronchitis or emphysema, things like that, or asthma, then you're not supposed to wear a mask. If you are deaf or hard of hearing and have, wear a hearing aid, you do not have to wear a mask. Well, I've got emphysema and bronchitis and COPD, and I have to wear a hearing aid. So you got it all. So, yeah, I've got it all. So, and and I explained that to him. I said, look, it's, it's, according to the rules, I'm not supposed to wear one. And he said, oh, well, you can't come in here without wearing one. We'll get it, we'll get fined. That's okay. how, yeah. And that's how, how it works. works. Yeah. So come back when you can wear a mask. Wow. Oh, I'm never coming back here. That's for damn wow. sure. Ooh. I cut my own hair. I don't know where I was going with that. I just cut my own hair the other day. Well, well, I've been doing that, but I do a bad job of it. You can't do the back. Have you got a, a mask story for us, Rob? I don't. Mm, not really. Just my wife. No, you either? I, uh, I better, they're everywhere here now. Uh, everybody's gone. I see idiots driving down the road in a car by themselves with fucking mask on. This is me. Yeah. Or, or walking down the street outside with yeah. nobody in, even close wearing a mask. Yeah, idiots. Now, most of the people I've actually talked to agree that the whole thing is bullshit and it's ridiculous and blah, blah, blah. And but most of, them, most of them wear them as chin straps, or a lot of them do. Uh, that's something else. Our ordinance doesn't say where you have to wear it. <laughs> you can wear it on your arm. <laughs> I, 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 I did that going into Walmart. The Walmart security guy would not let me in unless I took a mask from him. And so I, I was between the two doors going in, yeah. and he came in and said, you've got to have a mask. So I slid it on my arm, and I said, it doesn't say where i got to wear it. And walked on in and did my thing. <laughs> right on. Yeah, the whole thing is ridiculous. It's just sad to go even go anywhere anymore. It's just, uh, it, it's just disgusting. Yeah. This society is ruined. There is no point in doing these things. It's it's all political, and I've. If they hadn't got everybody that they want to round up now because they were in the mask, it's too damn late. I ain't wearing the mask, and lots of other folks are getting that same way. Yeah. Yeah, people are going to get tired of it eventually. It's just sad that so many rolled over for it. Yep. Just say no. So 96 volts and 400 amps is a no, no problem. No. No, not at all. Okay. Well, let me know when I can order. <laughs> really? I'm serious. I'm, I'm ready to go. Well, I I figure we can replace uh, the power systems on just about anything that uses batteries for their backup. Yeah. We can replace the power system for that building or whatever yeah. with with coils that will take up about less than half the room and thousands of pounds lighter. Yeah. Yeah, and big diesel generators you take up a lot of space. Oh, yeah. So, I've got an idea kind of kicking around in the back of my head. 
You ever been to Acapulco? Actually, no, but I'd love to go. Uh, I was thinking about going down there. I had a had a friend that went down there in the middle '60s, and uh, he's ten years older than I am. He's probably dead now. Uh, but he said that he sat at the edge of the water on the beach. That it was beautiful. And that there was a cabana boy that brought him by margaritas for 15 cents a piece. Yeah. And by the time he realized that he needed to go to the bathroom, <laughs> he had so many of them that he couldn't stand up and He couldn't get up to go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, but, that's... Uh, hmm. Well, I'm sure... I'd like to try that out. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure some of the people in the chat room will will know and recognize the name Jeff Berwick. Um, he's a guy that does. Uh, uh, he's they. He's called. He has a podcaster uh, business or website, whatever you want to call it, the Dollar Vigilante. Oh, okay. And he's in Acapulco, and they do that that uh, big anarchy conference down there every year, the Anarchapulco thing. Oh, okay. And I'm thinking he would be a perfect somebody to get involved and get down there and maybe set up some kind of manufacturing facility. Oh, I haven't told you about that. <laughs> We're lazy. I don't want. I don't want to have to operate a factory. Okay, I'm too damn old. Right. Okay, we're going to need thousands of these. Yeah. We're going to need. We're going to need many of them in every single location that we go to. Exactly. New industry. A whole new, new industry. industry. Oh yeah, I've already thought about that. It's going to be. Yeah. We're going to have to have light poles made out of anodized aluminum or out of wood, whatever, just depends on where we're at. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to have to have in-ground vaults made. Yeah. We're going to have to have uh, street lights made, LEDs hooked up. Yeah. We're going to, uh, if that's if we buy an existing shell, an existing light fixture, and just change the guts in it. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna gonna have to have a a ditching crew that installs the power to the houses or the buildings because most of that's going to be underground. Yeah, well, those those are already in existence. I mean, those are that's already yeah. there. It's just a repurpose. Yeah, but we're we're going to have to get the locals to do that, and being in a place that has no power, only generator power. The locals are going to have to be trained. We're yeah. going to have to have people that wind our coils. Yeah. We're going to have people that wire our coils. We're going to have to have lots and lots of people that inspect our coils. Yeah. So we're, we're going to be creating a lot of jobs, and then we buy from them to provide them the service that we put in. Right. And, and it, it's a win-win for everybody. It's a whole a cottage win. industry, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, uh, to begin with, we may just light a few houses and, and a grocery store. Yeah. That may be as far as we go with a village. I don't know how many, what size village they're taking us to. Right. Well, that's, oh, just, that's just something that's, that's been kicking around in my head. Uh, it started with this whole thing about, oh, you, oh, you haven't heard. I got robbed. Oh, no. Yeah, somebody broke into my garage and stole my lawnmower. Used boat cutters on the on the hat for the deadbolt. Yeah. What the hell is and going on? Lawnmower. What the hell? We are getting power fluctuations here. We may possibly lose uh, connection. Hello? You still there? Oops. 
And, uh, what, 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 what? You there? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can now. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, my lights just started flickering, and uh, I think we may be starting to see the beginnings of the hurricane starting to hit here. Uh, oh, shit. So, yeah, if, if we if we go away, that's what happened. Um, let's see, we're down. Yeah, it, was, it went through, did I tell you, going through the swamp? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you see. The cypresses were floating around and yeah, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I'm, so. uh, you're right. That should be hitting you right about now. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's what it's doing. Uh, let's see. Am I still on? Yeah, you're oh. still on. No, I mean uh, on the radio. Ah, uh, yes, it did drop. Okay. Um, did it, I, I assume it came back, Grimmier? You can hear me? So, okay, yeah, it's back. Okay. Anyways, yeah, uh, I think Flash just rebooted too, I don't know. They, they said that by the time it got to your house, there'd still be 60 and 70 mile an hour winds. No, well, we're not seeing that, but... That I can that I can tell from inside here, but <laughs> there, there's flash coming back. Did I make it back? You made, you made it. it. Okay. Damn yeah, it's, 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 I had a crash. Yeah, my system crashed. Yeah, we did too. Oh, okay. I my know. my powers my powers uh, started. My lights started flickering and. It wasn't, not even like a real power out, it's just kind of like a, where it's not, not sure if it was going to go off or not, <clears throat> but anyways. Well, okay, I sent Grim the set of the notes before I, I shut down to reboot. Oh, okay, cool. Because I didn't know, I don't know how to save those where I can send them to him without asking for help, because I've got a certain way to do this shit. Uh huh. And you're and stuck in your way. And you're, you're stuck in your way. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not too much in into learning more shit. I'm telling you, lazy bastard. Fuck. Boy, what's what's the point? point? Is point is is knowledge learning. It's good for your brain. Yeah, but see, if I talk to Karsten and he understands switching the neutral means, that opens a doorway. I'm not. I'm not prepared to go down all by myself, but... It's okay. You go down as far as you can. Give him what you can. Well, right. But Larry's a busy guy now with all this other stuff. So we've got to figure out a way for, you know, we've got a radio program for him to listen to, but I don't know which parts for him to listen to. All of it. Not all of it. Well, no, (laughs) that's what I mean. It's not... It's only about 30-something hours worth of... (laughs) <laughs> 30 or 40 hours uh, anyway still I, w- I would I would recommend I would say uh, he should listen to the first two or three shows because that's when Larry really okay. goes it goes into describing the coil and what it is and how it's built and all that but for you know the first shows when I was starting to try to build a coil and all that and he was explaining it all to me and everything okay that was, if that doesn't do it, nothing will. Yeah, that's the first first few shows. And as a matter of fact, even back on the uh, Smoke and Mirror show that I did with, with Larry. Uh, we're not live anymore, right? Yes, we're live. Oh, we are live. Okay, well, yeah. Grim's asking me about amended notes for the last 15 minutes. Yeah, he, I, I, he heard I you that. say that you sent the notes already, but if you want to add anything more, you can do that. I don't. You might. I don't. It's my show. I just do the I don't, no, Yeah. But no, I don't think we're going to talk about anything more of import for the rest yeah. of this show. So, anyway. Hey, it was a good, I had a good time. I mean, not, even though they hit a glitch, I understood the end result of it is the guy that needs to know is stuck on an old idea and won't listen. Yeah. You've got to show them. Well, that's an old standard in my world. 
Yeah. I've lived like that for a long time. That is surprising. That's, that's when you got to take them step by step. Do this, then do that. Now, forget about what you think you know. Hook this wire up to this junction. Hook that wire up to that junction. Do uh, this. Uh, put this uh, wire here. Connect that to that. Don't tell them why or how or any of that shit. Just put this wire here. Put that wire there. Put that wire there. Now, turn it on see what happens. Yep. That's exactly what I've been doing here lately. Exactly. Uh, Stop trying to explain the, the dynamics of it all and, and just say, here, this is how you build it. Do it this way. On, oh, okay, Grim. I didn't know what was going on. I, I got stoned during the show. <laughs> on our daily meetings, we yeah. discuss the theory and why it should work in that application, the, the way we've drawn it. Right. And, and we go both directions, from the neutral to the hot and from the hot to the neutral. We follow the polarity all along the way, and we discuss it. And we have different ideas, and one one of us may come up with something, and the other say, well, you can't do that because that's switching polarities. It's the wrong spot. So, okay, well, what will it do if it's here? And then we, we both run through the circuits in our heads and on our papers and see what they do. And if it is logical and if it completes the circuit, then we'll agree on it. If not, we'll discuss it yeah. until we figure out what yeah, we're well that's, that's all great when you're brainstorming. But once you've come to a conclusion and then an idea and you put it, got it on paper, then it's time to just build it and forget all the theory. Yep, yep. Build it and see what happens. Build what you got on paper and don't go trying to fix it when you're halfway through it uh, because you think, oh, well, that won't work. Just, just build what you got and then report the results. And, and then when it doesn't work, we take out our pencils and on that drawing, we, we think about it again and what would happen if we changed the Reconfigure. Yeah. Yeah. And we change our drawings along the way, and right. pretty soon we'll come up with another drawing that won't work. But hey. we know things that don't work now. Yeah, you know what not to do. Yeah, but like I said, these are drawings that will so work so something else. You never actually run a motor off of these coils in any way before. The very, very first test, there was cross wires and loose wires on his test board. And the uh -huh. very, very, very first time we energized the circuit, the motor spun, completely spun, and was doing just fine for about three seconds. Uh -huh. And by that time, it burned it up. wiggled the chair it was on, and the, it just stopped working. So, and we haven't been able to reproduce that since. He had, he had a loose wire in one of the positive connections, had a loose wire in one of the negative connections, and had a pair of wires that were in the wrong holes. Uh -huh. Oh, crap. We, we, never could, we never could make that configuration work again. So you did have you had it you had it recorded uh, what that configuration yeah. was, yeah, uh, specifically. So and you tried it again and it didn't work the next time, right? Yeah. And you think it might be due to loose connections or yeah, it, or it was it, it was the loose connection that was vibrating and giving it a frequency that made that motor run. That's what made it absolute positive in my mind that you've got to have AC to make this thing work. What if you just throw one of the modulator co uh, boards on it just to see if that does something? We discussed that and that square wave and that won't work. It's positive square wave comes off that modulator board. Yeah. It's beyond me on that part. <clears throat> I, I wouldn't have known that unless somebody explained it to me. I had no idea how a modulator board worked at all. Not even close. So it, it was explained to me, and I finally understood how it worked. 
and there's just a capacitor and a MOSFET in that board. Yeah. Um, so, uh, does it have to be? Could, could you build one that isn't square wave? I mean, is that the problem, that, it, that it's a square wave? Yeah. Yeah, it's square wave and all positive. We need we need positive and negative in a pure sine wave. In a way, in a, yeah. Uh, okay. In a wave to don't, make the polarity change. Well, don't they make those? Or can't you build them? Uh, we're building one now. In fact, we're building two of them now. Okay. Uh, the guy in Sweden and the guy in Washington. Cool. He does what he's doing this afternoon. He's uh, adapting some rheostats. Are very actually these are actually rheostats. Uh, he's plugging them into 120 volts and seeing if he can lower the voltage coming out of them to something that we want to play with mm -hmm. uh, down to like at at the very most 48 volts. Okay. Wow, you guys Holy are talking a new language. And Grim says if it's a DC, it's a square wave. Is that right? Uh, you can pulse DC, and that gives you a square wave. DC comes out flat. It's it's one constant voltage that that never stops. But AC is voltage that goes in a positive direction half of the time and in a negative direction the other half of the time. So it, it pulses. Uh, but well, I just but thought, I did, he didn't put any punctuation to it. Except the yeah, if it's like DC, it. it's square wave, he says. Basically, yeah, that's if you're pulsing it for the purpose of creating yeah, AC. Square wave is pulsing DC. Yeah, yeah. I, some yeah. some some DC rectifiers with a bridge rectifier or a half bridge rectifier in it. Is that right? Anyway, with some sort of a bridge rectifier in it, it will give you that negative side of the square wave, so that you get the positive and the negative. Right. But I haven't got that. I don't have one of those. It's just a four-way bridge rectifier. It's four diodes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know what it looks like on paper, but I don't know how to build one. Uh, you have I internet. Can, I can well, I can read it on a wiring diagram, yes, but knowing how to to put it onto a circuit board and make it work, no. I can do it in a room. What you do in a three by five note card. Okay. That's that's where my knowledge is. My. All through school, we may have had uh, two chapters at the very most on on uh, circuitry. Yeah, on electronics. We had a lot of circuitry, but it was mostly in electrical equipment. Digital electronics. Yeah. No, I don't oh, not, not not digital, but uh, circuitry. Printed circuitry. Yeah. PCB. Yeah. Well, no, we weren't printed circuit boards. We were wiring buildings. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. But it, no, I'm talking about the two, cl the two classes that you had on electronics as opposed to electrical systems. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Um, I don't know. That's... That's weird. Well... It, well I'm not involved. I'm not uh, deeply involved enough to get into the specifics of it. But uh, I want to be. <laughs> some, of these, some of these types of coils have got to have a load on them before they'll do anything. So that uh, may be one of our problems. And on this last drawing... Well, maybe all you need to do is hook up an LED light to the damn thing. That's what our last drawing is. I've got two LED lights on it, and I've added capacitors to it. Mm -hmm. I've got the I've got the capacitors balanced out with okay. Four so you four got one coil B that'll give us resonance. Yeah, because you have to have your constant load on there to keep the thing running. Right. 
That's why that's why it jerks and then stops at the at that neutral spot. Exactly. Exactly. So and you have to have something oh, there goes my power freaking out again. Uh oh. Uh, six minutes. That, that yeah, was, we're done with six minutes. I don't know I don't think I lost connection this time. That was probably a transformer blowing up somewhere between you and the power plant. Yeah, and then and then the rest of the system picking up the slack. Yeah. Yep. Neither yep. one of you in a hurricane path. I'm right in it. Yeah. Oh, you guys so, is, well, you kind of well, it's going to keep swerving to the to the east. Uh, it's, gonna, it's supposed to go well, to the boot field, which is all the way down on the other side of the state from me. Mm. Yeah, it's curving east, curling. Yeah. But uh, I think it's going to be a nothing better by the time it really hits here. Oh, okay. we're starting to get the edge of it. Well, I can tell you what it's doing outside right now. You know. oh, let's see what the. Holy crap! Holy crap! He says that's a shit storm looking conglomeration of mess. No, it's actually going. It's actually almost past us. Good. It, we're, we're right dead in the middle of it right now. It's mostly passing to the east of us, the real heavy shit. But we're kind of like in the eye. Well, what would have been, well, not quite. We're, the eye is coming up soon. According to the future pro, uh, prediction, it'll be here about, oh, it's just going to dissipate. Yeah, the eye is, you can kind of see where the eye was right now. Or is by the time it gets up here, it just it just dissipates and well, that's just, good for you. Just yeah, it's just a yeah. We may not get a whole lot of wind because I mean it hasn't gotten windy or anything here. So, yeah, you're lucky. I, I've been through a few hurricanes. They're not fun. Oh well, no, I was. It wouldn't have been anything severe here anyway. It's, yeah, but if you if it had been. But it didn't lucky you. Yeah. You get that lull in the eye of the storm for a while, and then it starts all over again. Yeah, yeah. We're not nowhere near close enough to the coast to get that effect. No, the biggest concern here is tornadoes. And oh, well, side effects. That, side effects. Yeah. You know, my biggest concern here is I might have to wear a mask to go to get groceries or not go. Yeah, that's my big problem. That's it. I haven't been in the grocery store in, in shit about a month now. I go every no. day. No, Becca Becca does all the shopping and going out of doing things and all that. Anything that requires a mask. Wow. Well, see, it doesn't require it yet. That's what I'm saying. So far, so good. Yeah. Now they're requiring them here. They're requiring them here. And in restaurants, it's the dumbest fucking thing ever. I mean, you got to wear a mask until you get to your table and get a drink, and then you take your mask yeah, off. How it's fucking stupid is that? <laughs> you fucking morons. Not only that, if if you'll read the instructions that come with a mask, it oh. says you've got, to, you've got to replace it every 20 minutes. <laughs> there are the hazardous waste disposal yeah. units. My lights are going on and off and crazy. Uh, I think we need to go ahead and wrap up, guys, because I'm not sure I'm going to have power very much longer. Thanks a lot, Larry. So, Thanks a lot, Rob. I had fun. Yeah, it's been a good show. Think you'll make it next week, Larry? If I'm not testing, I'll be here. All right. Thanks for being here today. Always, you could always rearrange it on another on another. Yeah, we can we can the schedule is completely flexible, so if you yeah, want to do it on Wednesday or Friday or any other days anytime you wanna come on, just let me know. Hey, we'll do a show. Just out hot on the fly or whatever. Breaking news. <laughs> Sounds good. Right, I, right. I do a quick hour. When I do a solo I just do an hour. It goes by pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. We can, I was thinking about that too. If you want to, if you have an announcement or something you want to come on and do, we can do an hour show real quick or whatever. Anytime. Or if, My wire is always motor, open. If we get the motor spinning, I will call you. Yeah, give me an update. 
get it spinning, Larry. You bet. All right. Well, I think we made it. Everybody. Thanks for listening, folks. We will uh, see you guys next week sometime, probably Thursday, unless something comes up. See you all later. Bye-bye.